One of your destroyers has found a sub. It has to be German. None of our subs or British subs are anywhere nearby. And we know from decoded messages that Donuts ordered at least two of his group Seawolf subs to this area. Frost has joined the attack, said the enlisted man who was listening to a set of earphones and had reported a minute earlier. Normally two destroyers should be enough to finish off a sub. But with this lousy weather and fog, well, that sub just might slip away, said the Admiral. Tory said nothing. He knew that the Admiral was aware of the intel that Group Seawolf might be trying to launch V-1 buzz bombs at New York. But that was classified information, and the other personnel in the room were not supposed to know anything about it. Both he and the Admiral remained quiet as they listened to the reports coming in from Stanton and Frost. It was six minutes later when another report almost made Tory's heart stop beating. Stanton reports she's been torpedoed! Tory heard the Admiral curse. Within seconds, there was a follow-up report. Stanton now says no torpedo, but an underwater explosion so loud they thought they'd been hit. Tory and the Admiral exchanged puzzled looks. Tory knew just enough about anti-submarine warfare to understand that enemy submarines didn't explode with anything like that much energy. What would be far more typical would be for one of Stanton's hedgehog mortar shells to punch a hole in a sub's hull if it made contact, and then the sub would sink from taking on too much water unless it managed to surface first in order to surrender and get the crew off. Has anything like that ever happened before, Admiral? asked Tory. No, I've never heard of something like that happening, not even from other task forces. Tory checked his watch. It was now a few minutes past midnight. Over the next fifteen minutes, all reports from both Stanton and Frost were negative. Tory was starting to get drowsy and wondered if he dared return to his quarters. He didn't want to give the Admiral an excuse to criticize him in the after-action report. Frost reports a possible sub-sonar contact, Admiral, said the crewman. Frost is engaging their hedgehogs, he said a few seconds later. Tory and the Admiral waited in silence. Repeat that? said the crewman into his headphones microphone. Okay, got it. Admiral, Frost reports hydrophones have detected an explosion and sounds of a sub breaking up. The Admiral grinned. Sounds like they got that fucker. Tory was just about to respond when he heard a low rumble and felt the ship vibrate alarmingly. What the hell? Check with the captain, ordered the admiral. Find out if we've been hit by a torpedo. Yes, sir. Captain, this is CIC. The admiral wants to know if the ship's been hit by a torpedo. There was a pause. I'll pass that along, captain. Admiral, the captain says no reports of damage and he's unable to explain the vibration. Uh, admiral... Frost reports a very loud underwater explosion. They say it was so loud some rivets popped loose. Tory looked at the Admiral, who gestured with his head for Tory to follow him as he headed out into the corridor. After waiting until they had the corridor to themselves, the Admiral leaned in closer and spoke in a low voice. This carrier is twelve goddamn miles away from Frost, and that explosion shook this ship like nothing I've ever experienced. Do you know anything that could explain it? No, sir, said Tory, and he meant it. He was at a loss, too. The Admiral looked at him with a skeptical expression. I wish I could believe you, but my experience with you Navin cowboys has been that you don't always tell the truth. I just want to remind you that I'm cleared for top-secret material. If there's something you're not telling me, tell me now, and I'll chalk it up to a momentary lapse in memory. I do not know of anything that would or could explain those explosions, Admiral. You know as much about our intel on those subs as I do. Even if they were carrying a V-1 buzz bomb, that wouldn't explain the magnitude of those explosions. The Admiral sighed. Okay. I'll proceed on the assumption that you're being truthful. But if I ever find out that you just lied to me, I'll go straight to the President and demand that you be busted back to Lieutenant J.G. You got that? Loud and clear, Admiral. Tory watched as the Admiral returned to the CIC. He decided to stay in the corridor for a bit and have a smoke. He wasn't sure that a one-star Admiral could get an audience with the President, but he knew that some flag officers had enough friends in high places that they might be able to do just that. Not that he was worried. He really didn't know what could have caused those explosions. By the time he'd finished his cigarette... He figured the Admiral had probably calmed down, and he re-entered CIC. At least he wasn't drowsy anymore. <laughs>